G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for another trade period related video. In this video, I wanted to take a look at some lower cost options that might be available at various clubs. And I've got a whole list of names here we want to work through one by one um, to discuss, you know, which players could add value at another club that are seemingly unwanted by the current club or, you know, for various reasons are going to go fairly cheap. We've seen, you know, over time teams really improve their list quickly by these money ball, if you want to call it that. Money ball is probably a bit of an overused term when we talk about footy, but low cost, high value trade options. You know, I mean, the year before Collingwood won the premiership, I think they traded in four players that didn't cost the world. We've seen Hawthorne in recent time do a really good job of adding about six to eight players out of their best 22 with relatively cheap trades. So in this video, I'm going to talk about a lot of the players that are linked to moves away from the club. A few haven't been linked necessarily, or well, some have been delisted and have not necessarily been linked yet, but we're going to get into that. So there's a million ways to, to slice up this video and how to present it. I'm going to say that I'm going to break it into two categories. We've got players who are going to be relatively cheap, and that is a subjective term, I know, but relatively cheap players who have been linked to a club. We'll cover off those, but I want to have a bit more of a pronounced focus on some of these lower cost types that either have been linked to multiple clubs or it's very unclear where they're going to go, or in some cases, maybe they haven't been linked anywhere specifically yet. I want to focus on those as well. But let's cover off some of the more money ball, if you like, options that have been linked to clubs. So Elliot Himmelberg is one that has been rumored to go to Gold Coast this year. That was reported a week or so ago um, and probably mixed in around this Lacocious to Port Adelaide thing where Gold Coast getting some cheap cover. Jack Carroll from Carlton has been linked to a move away from the club. I believe he's still uncontracted and um, there has been links to West Coast. He could just end up being delisted, but he has been linked to one club and one club only as far as I can see. Dev Robertson could fall into this category as well. I, I saw this morning um, West Coast have at least asked the question again. They pursued him 12 months ago. He decided to recommit to Brisbane. However, he hasn't played since round three, not in the grand final team. And I, I'd imagine this question comes up again. So that could be a relatively cheap cheap option for West Coast there. Again, just the one club he's really been linked to. That being said, you know, if he's not particularly homesick, that is one that other clubs could look at. You know, potentially Richmond, who probably need some cheap mature age depth, given what they're going to lose this offseason. Joe Richards, I mean, is he cheap? That remains to be seen. He only played the nine games this year for six goals. I think there is a good player there. Port Adelaide, obviously, agree. Collingwood and Port fighting that out for, um, you know, his signature. Both clubs are offering three-year deals. Um, but I'd imagine a trade itself would probably be somewhat cheap. Either way, just linked to the one club outside of Collingwood. Um, you could probably throw the veterans under this broad category of low cost, high value. Dusty Martin, does he end up at Gold Coast? Trent Cotchin's insisting it's almost certainly not going to happen. Fair enough. I thought I'd include him. Parker and Darling may end up at North Melbourne for pretty cheap deals. And you'd imagine that the, the experience and the value that they can provide would far exceed the cost, I'd imagine. There's also Nick Haynes to Carlton. That one seems to like it's going to happen this year. Similar sort of thing, mature depth. I'd imagine they probably see a role for him in their best 22. Wade Dirksen is another cheap one that will get from GWS to Melbourne. He has requested a trade formally, hasn't played a game yet. Tom Cleary to West Coast remains possible. West Coast looking for some mature age depth to um, you know, obviously replace Tom Barris in a team that uh, obviously needs some key back depth. They probably need to draft one as well, but Tom Cleary has been linked to a move to West Coast. Josh Rotham has been linked to Essendon. This is, again, just a player that has been linked to one club only. This seems to be dependent on Jaden Laverde's future. I've seen previously Laverde linked to both Carlton and Geelong. So that one's a little bit messy um, as to how that happens because if Carlton get Haynes, maybe Laverde gets to Geelong. If he doesn't go to Geelong at all, does that mean Rotham doesn't get picked up by anyone? Uh, it's possible, but I'll put that out there. A few delisted free agents that have been linked to one club. So there's Tom Campbell from St Kilda who has been linked to being signed as a free agent to Melbourne. And similarly, Jack Martin seems to be heading to Geelong based on the, the more recent rumor that Geelong are keen and the feeling is mutual. Fremantle probably haven't been super in that race as far as we can tell. Caleb Daniel, you'd, I'd imagine, goes fairly cheap. I got picked up for saying he'd go real cheap in my North Melbourne video, but I think if a player's out of favor, regardless of the contract, I don't think that would cost North Melbourne much. North Melbourne has been the most powerful link to Caleb Daniel there. And I have seen more recently uh, another delisted free agent, Curtis Taylor, who was cut by North Melbourne, could end up at St Kilda. He's 24, played 76 games, just the eight this year. Um, again, a pretty low cost one, and he's not a bad footballer, probably needs to improve to, to really add something to St Kilda. Great, so that was that was me rattling off all the ones that we kind of know about, whereas with this video, I want to focus on players where clubs still have an opportunity to get in there and, um, you know, recruit them. So 
the biggest one is probably James Peatling. Now, cost is hard to, to measure with Peatling. He's out of contract and played 19 games this year. He's 24, had a good year. So whether or not he's cheap is probably you know, based on perspective. It's completely subjective. I'd imagine he doesn't go for a trade in the top 20 of this year's draft, I would have thought. But when you've got the Demons, the Bulldogs, Collingwood, St. Kilda, and West Coast in the market for him currently, there's still a lot of opportunity for clubs to get in front in that race. He's far from, you know, leaning to one club as far as it's been reported at the moment. So James Peatling probably could be the, the best value selection somebody takes in this year's trade period. I also want to talk about Matt Kennedy. This is an interesting one. He's been a little bit sidelined at Carlton. You know, I think he attended about 33% of center bounces this year and has been more or less told to explore his options in his exit interview. Now, I could probably want to do a video on Carlton in the near future and, and, and what that looks like from their end. But from his end, it sounds like he wants to stay in Victoria. I believe he has a young family. And he also wants to play on ball. And that's not really happening at Carlton. Obviously, pretty good midfield. Like I said, 33% of center bounces. So where does Matt Kennedy end up? Well, it's probably still open-ended. And I, again, I'm going to throw Richmond into here. Another mature body, you know, behind Taranto and Hopper and, and Prestia, who's still there. They're going to have draft the shit out of this draft, add a few midfielders, but some protection that won't cost the world, I wouldn't have thought. I think when Carlton signals to the competition that, that Kennedy is able to explore his options, it probably implies they're very open to a trade here. So that one, I think, will happen. I would like to see Richmond have a little bit of a look at him, maybe Essendon or someone as well. But there's still plenty of opportunity because there has been no meaningful link to one particular club, and that's the part I wanted to focus on in this video. Matt always as well. I think could be a good value trade for a club who's out of contract. Um, I, I did say in my North video, I thought, you know, maybe just pick 22, get it done. And, and a lot of people have come back at me saying that's too much. Let me know in the comments what you think. I think if a guy has a good year as a small forward, 34 goals or whatever it was as a small forward is pretty good output. Bearing in mind, it does work against Carlton that he's out of contract and they've also more or less implied that they would rather trade him. I realize that. In the North example, I looked at their draft picks. I thought 40 was not enough and 22 may be generous, particularly the strength of this draft, but there's no other pick that they had. I think a pick in the top 30 is about right. And you could still say that's as a cheap value option. So he's been linked to Brisbane, Gold Coast, West Coast, Port Adelaide, and I think North Melbourne as teams that have inquired about him, but really no indication as to who is leading that race at the moment. I think this could be a good opportunity for one of those clubs um, to capitalize on that. And I think... If I was always, I'd probably be considering North Melbourne if I was motivated to stay in Victoria, which usually is the case, but not always. Um, I want to talk about Lewis Young as well. This could be an interesting one. Um, I haven't personally seen him linked to any particular club. Maybe I, I saw a snippet about North Melbourne, but I... But take that with a grain of salt because I actually don't remember if I read that on Big Footy or something. I usually quote where I where I get things from, and I'm not too sure about Lewis Young. Now he's been again told to explore his options. Carlton obviously getting Haynes and and saying Young is probably not as required as he once was. And given he is a key back that's about 26, I want to say Lewis Young still plenty to offer at AFL level. And usually this time of year there is a degree of interest in players that are key position and can fill a role. So honestly, it's very open-ended what happens here with Lewis Young, and I'd imagine he doesn't cost the world. So this is one of the more interesting ones, I think. Where does Lewis Young get to in this offseason? Brandon Parfit could be one to move clubs. Now, he has been formally delisted by Geelong after just nine games this year, but he's 26 and he's played 130 games overall. So you get a, a mature body there who can take a midfield rotation. He attended 55% of centre bounces for Geelong this year. So a chunk of midfield time, it resulted in about 17 disposals a game. And obviously Geelong no longer have them in their plans, but again, a mature body that could add value to a rebuilding team. So again, Richmond could be a contender here as, as a team that probably has a need there. And I'd imagine I'd throw my own club there, West Coast, as a team that probably could use another on-ball rotation to protect some of the younger players. So no indication where Parfoot, as far as I can tell, is going to end up. But I would not be surprised if he ends up at another club because I think he's shown a bit at AFL level for sure in his 130 games. Connor Stone is another interesting one. So he was a first round pick to GWS in 2020. He's 22 years of age. And I remember, you know, I'll be honest, I remember more him as a draftee and he was a bit of an exciting forward who could probably play as that explosive midfielder. That's the way I remember him as a prospect. As it would happen in the 2020 draft, a lot of those kids haven't turned out because due to the pandemic, so much football was missed and it is more or less played out that, you know, a lot of teams had some busts in the, uh, you know, in the top 
well, the entire draft, actually. I think it went for about 58 picks, which is quite short. But Connor Stone, he is out of contract now. It, it does sound like GWS have offered him a two-year deal, and he's considering that. Can't get a game. And that makes sense. Maybe, maybe that's what's happened with Connor Stone. I'm not too close to the situation. He's only played the 13 games. All four of his games this year were sub-affected. Is it the best move in his career to move somewhere where he can get a more consistent game? So to me, the fact that GWS is offering him a two-year deal suggests that there is a belief in the industry that he can play football and therefore I would not be surprised if Connor Stone ends up somewhere else he's Victorian from memory so he could be one to watch this trade period for sure Jacob Constanti I mentioned in a recent video um, pick 20 in 2022 so a relatively hard draft pick who has lasted the two seasons and he's still currently out of contract now I don't believe he's been formally delisted yet I think it's still you know he's still out of contract and of course Sydney as I recall this, this is before the, the 2024 grand final. So it makes sense they haven't delisted anyone while they're still active anyway. So I could see a move for Jacob Constanti. It may be that he doesn't get picked up at all, but you look at teams that could use a small forward this year. I mean, Port's looking at Richards and Owies. Could Constanti be a cheap option behind those if they miss out? Carlton as well. I mean, if they're ditching Matthew Owies, could they look at Constanti as a cheap, you know, he, he wouldn't cost a lot. And Victorian from memory. Sorry, I had a moment there. I couldn't remember where Constanti is from. He's from Vic Country. I just confirmed that. So could there be a club like a Carlton Report or even a North Melbourne who probably would look at a small forward here? I said in my previous video that GWS reportedly were interested in Constanti that draft, but they've drafted Phoenix, Phoenix Goddard since. So, you know, it, it's really unclear where he goes, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's a player that ends up at another club. And finally, Riley Garcia is another one I'm going to throw into the mix here, who I think could be one of those players that does thrive at a new club. Now, we know that he's out of contract at the Western Bulldogs. He did play 12 games this year for 15 and a half disposals, which isn't amazing as you know a, a, a midfielder, but 17% of center bounces this year. So another player that's probably been fallen to the wayside a little bit. Bulldogs obviously had a pretty good year, certainly in their midfield. It's hard to break into, and he has been linked to a move away to Port Adelaide and West Coast. So the reason he's in this category is because if he was linked to just one of those clubs, I would have mentioned him much earlier in this video, but this one is still open-ended, and we don't know where he's going to end up. But I do think there is an AFL-quality player there who had to play his trade a lot in the VFL this year and played really well in the VFL. So he's doing a lot right, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him you know, head to one of those clubs and be a good value selection. So those are a lot of the ones that I can think of at the moment. I will, I will highlight two players that are excluded from this, Xavier O'Halloran and Ollie Lord. Ollie Lord, I mentioned in my last video that Colin would have asked the question. He is contracted, and you'd imagine... Port Adelaide's uh, forward line situation with Charlie Dixon retiring, uncertainty around Todd Marshall, even with Lukosius coming in, Port Adelaide would have to be motivated to, to get rid of him and therefore I think probably does not qualify as a good value trade. Same thing with Xavier O'Halloran, with so many other players linked to moves to leaving GWS. Uh, we just talked about Peatling coming, potentially Connor Stone and uh, obviously Perryman as well. O'Halloran is contracted and still gets a bit of a game at GWS. So my thinking is, even though the Bulldogs have inquired about him, I'm going to say it probably won't be cheap for them to prize him loose. Not impossible, but probably doesn't come into the category of a good value trade. So there you have it, guys. I hope that was a fairly exhaustive look at some of the, you know, the maybe discounted or, or good value trades that clubs can pick up. Because like I've said, you know, premiership teams are built not primarily, but partially through the ability to make shrewd trades for underappreciated talents at other clubs or players that can just fit a hole. Ooh. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.